All right, so in this lesson, we are going to continue with graphing quadratics, but now we're going to graph them when they're in vertex form. And so in my opinion, I think this is a lot easier than graphing when they're in standard form. So in order to do this, we need to be able to identify the shifts of the vertex, which we did a little bit in that transformations lesson. I can graph the vertex, so once I identify that point, I can put it on the graph, which is just like graphing from standard form. I can identify the vertical stretch or compression, so talking about that A value. Is it getting taller and skinnier, or is it getting fatter and shorter? Um, and then I can use the vertical stretch or compression to graph other points using that parent table. And then also, if I'm given a set of transformations, can I write the equation in vertex form? So these are the types of questions that you will have to do with this. So if I was given a bunch of um, transformations, can I put it in the equation? Um, taking a equation in vertex form and identifying the vertex, and then taking a given, um, given this, can I identify all the transformations that have occurred? All right, so let's just do a quick review of um, what we've already done, but let's focus specifically on the quadratics. So the parent graph of a quadratic, we know that this is the parent function, and so it's going to follow that parent table. And so if I input 0, 0 squared is 0. If I input 1, 1 squared is 1. If I input 2, 2 squared is 4. And if I input 3, 3 squared is 9, and so on and so forth. Also, if I inputted negative 1, well, negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is a positive 1. If I input negative 2, I get a positive 4. So my parent graph goes through the origin, and then from there, I go over 1, up 1. From the vertex, I go over 2, up 4. From the vertex, I go over 3, up 9. And then all of those points are going to reflect over my axis of symmetry, which in this case, because there are no transformations, it's just my parent graph, my axis of symmetry is right there on the y-axis. And so they're going to reflect. I can also go left 1, up 1. Whoops, wrong color. I can go left 2 from the vertex, up 4. I could go left 3, up 9. So my parent graph goes through the origin and follows that normal parent table. All right, let's see what you remember about the transformations. So when the A value, or what's being multiplied by the parent graph, is 3, what's going to happen? Go ahead and pause the video and try that. All right, so hopefully you noticed that the black is my parent function, so I just graphed y equals x squared. And then if it has a factor of 3, meaning I'm going to increase everything 3 times as much. So I took my parent table and I multiplied that vertical movement by 3. And so instead of going over 1, up 1, it's now going over 1, up 3, because it's doing 3 times the parent graph. And so it got skinnier and taller, so it has that vertical stretch of 3. All right, so 1 half. Let's go back and remember what 1 half does. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one. All right, so when you graphed it, hopefully you saw that it got compressed. So again, the black is my parent graph. That's just y equals x squared. And now, instead of um, following just a normal when a is 1, I'm taking half of everything. So instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm doing half of that. So I'm going over 1, up a half. And instead of going over 2, up 4, I'm doing half of that. And so I'm going over 2, up 2. And instead of going over 3, up 9, I'm doing half. So I go up 4 and a half. And so that gives me a um, compressed graph. So every point has been, um, is, has the vertical movement has been done in half. All right, so just a quick review of what um, we've been talking about for this past week with transformations. If you remember, the A value is always going to affect the stretch or compress. All right, so remember, if it's a fraction, if my A value is a fraction, then it has vertical compression, so it gets shorter and um, wider. And if it's a whole number, it's going to have vertical stretch, so it's going to get taller and skinnier. And remember, if A is just 1, then we won't have a number there. Um, that just means it's following the normal parent table. I'm doing one times what that table was. And then the last thing is, is if A is negative, remember it reflects down. So over the x-axis and it opens down. All right, so let's talk about H. 
So remember, H is my horizontal movement, so that's my right left. And remember, it does the opposite of what we think because the formula or the general term is to take x and subtract the movement. So if the movement's positive, then it's x minus h, and right movement is positive. And then if it's negative, so if the h value is negative, that movement is negative, minus a negative becomes plus. So it does the opposite of what we think inside the squared. Um, that's my horizontal movement. And then so k... So my K is my vertical movement, and it follows what we would think. So if on the end, not inside the squared, but on the end, if it's plus, then it's going to shift up that many, and if it's minus, it's going to shift down that many. So this is a really important form, and you need to know what each number, I'm sorry, which each variable does and how it affects the graph. All right, so as I'm going through this process, these are the questions that I'm asking myself. So first of all, what transformations have occurred? So when I look at the function, what is it doing? So is there an A? Is there an H? Is there a K? What's it doing? What type of shift, stretch or compress, or reflection does each transformation mean? Then I need to say, where's the vertex? And I'm going to put it on the graph. And then if there is vertical compression or stretch, how is the parent table affected? So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so we're going to use those questions, the first two, because all we're doing here is identifying what transformations have occurred. And remember, we're doing it from the parent graph of y equals x squared. That's my most basic form of a quadratic. So first, we need to identify what transformations are happening. So is there an a value? Is there an h value? Is there a k value? So when I look at this, I see that there is a 3 on the inside, and that's my H, that's my horizontal movement. And, and then I see that there's a plus 4 on the end, and that's my K, that's my vertical movement. And then there is no reflection, um, because there's no negative, it's a positive. And there is no vertical stretch or compression, because the A value is 1. So it's going to follow that normal parent table. So what movement is going to happen? So with an H of 3 and a K of 4, what's going to happen? So X minus 3 is going to be a right movement, and so it's going to shift right 3. And then the plus K on the end, the plus 4, it's going to shift up 4. All right, let's look at example two. Go ahead and pause the video, and I'd like you to identify A, H, and K and what those values are going to do to the graph. So hopefully you're able to identify that it's going to shift left three because of my um, H value being um, minus the negative makes that plus, and it's going to shift up one because my K value is one, and then my A value is 2. It's not negative, so it's not going to reflect, but it is going to have a vertical stretch of 2. So I'm going to double that parent table. All right, go ahead and pause the video, and I'd like you to try example 3 and 4 on your own. All right, so in example 3, hopefully you saw it's going to shift right 1, it's going to shift down 4, and it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So it's going to, instead of going over 1, up 1, it's going to go over 1, down 1, because the A value is still 1, so it's not changing the vertical movement, it's just the direction that it goes. And then in example four, it's going to shift left two, down three, and that A value is one half, so it's going to compress, meaning everything is going to move in half of what it normally would. All right, so that's a quick review, um, and we are now able to identify the shifts and be able to identify the vertical stretch or compress. So go ahead and pause the video, um, write down any questions that you have, any interactions in your notes, what do you need to be sure to, um, what are things that you are forgetting. All right, so we are now going to graph those four examples. So if you remember back to example one, we identified that it's going to shift right three and it's going to shift up four. So what that means is that each one of these points on this graph is going to shift right three and up four. This one's going to shift right 3 and up 4. This one's going to shift right 3 and up 4. That's what it's doing. Every point is shifting right 3 and up 4. So let's go ahead and let's graph the vertex. So it is shifting right 3, and then it's shifting up 4. So this is going to be my vertex right there. Now from there, we're going to follow, just like we did with standard form, to graph the other points we're going to follow our parent table. So 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. And when I look at it, it had no stretch or compress. My A value was 1. So from my vertex, I'm going to shift over 1, up 1, 
and reflect. Over two from the vertex, up four, and reflect. And that is my new quadratic. So it is shifted from the blue to the new location. All right, so let's go ahead and do example two. So we said that it's gonna shift left three, it's gonna shift up one, and now it has a vertical stretch of two. So instead, of, it's gonna double all of that vertical movement. So let's go ahead and graph the vertex. So left three, up one, so there's my new vertex. And then my parent table of one, one, two, four, three, nine, I have a stretch of two, so I'm doubling everything. So it's going to increase faster, which is why it gets tall and skinny. So instead of going over one up one, I'm going to go over one up two. I've doubled that value. And instead of going over two up four, I'm going to go over two up eight. And I'm going to reflect that. And that is my graph. So do you see how vertex form is so much faster? All right, go ahead and I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to try example three and four on your own. All right, so for example three, hopefully you are able to graph your vertex. It went right one and down four and then it had a vertical, I'm sorry, it had a reflection over the x-axis so it opened down. So now instead of going over one up one, it's going over one down one and reflecting and over two down four and over three down nine. So that's my graph. All right, so for example four, um, the graph, the vertex shifted left four and down three, I'm sorry, left two and down three. And then it had a compression of one half. So I'm gonna do half of all the vertical movements. So instead of going over one up one, I'm gonna go over one up a half. And then instead of going over two up four, I'm doing half of that, so I'm going up two. And then instead of going over three up nine, I'm doing half of it, so I'm going up 4.5. And that's my graph. All right, so we have now identified the shifts and then put them on the graph. Um, so go ahead and have an interaction in your notes. Where are you going to need to pay attention and um, remember? What are the different things that you do understand? What don't you understand? And we'll go from there.